All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in an explosive welterweight co-main event of the evening at Brave CF 44 in Combat Kingdom in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner! This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and one loss. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 78.9 kilograms. Representing Art Suave in Copenhagen, Denmark. Please welcome Louis Spartacus Gleesman! And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and one loss and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79.6 kilograms. Representing Team Ross de la Hiva in Nantes, France. Please welcome the former Brave Combat Federation welterweight champion of the world. Abdul Lazy King Abdurakimov! Your referee is Raven Light Saber. Everything else is bang on the nose. Louis Gleesman with a quiet intensity. He's ready to go. Abdul Abdurakimov with that Lazy King persona that he is now adopting. Nice inside leg kick from Abdul Abdulagimov. Phil, these two have come here to scrap. This is there's not going to be a long feeling out period where nothing significant happens. And Abdul Abdulagimov has a striking style that's that's unorthodox. It almost looks uncomfortable, but he throws punches from strange angles and they land. Nice it's also straight. tough, Phil, because he's fighting a southpaw. That le that that left that check left hook may have actually staggered his opponent momentarily. It'll be interesting to see if either man shoots for the take. Oh, oh, clean shot right straight down the middle from the Lazy King. Oh, Abdul Abdul Ragimov showing a little bit of boxing IQ here, rolling with the punches. He is indeed, Phil, and what we're seeing here, I believe, is the expression of his new nickname. He's not the conqueror, he's the Lazy King. And what he says is he's fighting as efficiently as possible. See, he's using the shoulder roll absolutely beautifully there, but I was about to say to you, because both of these men are such celebrated jiu-jitsu practitioners, you could potentially see a fight like this just winding up as a striking battle. It could indeed, not because they're forced to one by the other, but I think it could end up that way because these two love to strike. These men are doing what they love oh, to do! Kick. And that was a big shot! Oh, but counter, counter hook from... Louis Single Gleesman. leg down on the ground, Lazy King on top. And here we are, we see a little bit of that jiu-jitsu scramble I was talking about. Abdul Abdurragimov has incredible top game, incredible jiu-jitsu informed by Dagestani style wrestling. And now he's just taking his time, being methodical. Louis Gleesman trying to roll with the hips. Perhaps trying to use this position to reverse. May try and roll into a knee bar. He does have one submission via knee bar. Phil, it's difficult to see, but Gleesman is showing extraordinary strength here. He was not successful, but he did show an extraordinary core strength in that failed attempt. He does have incredible flexibility too, and right now he's abandoned the underhook he had on the leg and is now using it to try and switch. But look at the strength of Abdul Abdul Ragimov just pinning Louis Gleesman down. You see, with that underhook, you can roll out into the likes of a Dars when you're the man on the bottom. It's incredibly difficult when you have somebody as informed as Abdul Abdul Ragimov in top position. He's trying to dig in for that underhook. Again, trying to get underneath that leg is Louis Gleesman, but he needs to be wary of the head on triangle here from Abdul Abdul Ragimov. It's set. Abdul needs to pass to that far side, not get reversed. Forces oh, opponent that is down for so the This is up! And it's over! The Lazy King! Wins via submission in round one! Unbelievable submission. Abdul Abdul Regimov might just have some of the best 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in MMA right now. It is like a hot knife through butter. As soon as he locked up the arm, it was game over. That is as close to a perfect fight as you can get in professional mixed martial arts, Kirik. Phil, that was as perfect a melding of wrestling and Jiu Jitsu as you will ever, ever see. Perfect top pin right into a submission that was so tight. It was, it was over before it was fully sunk. And the Lazy King looks on calmly as his followers on bent knee take a picture of him. Abdul Abduragimov, the Lazy King, victorious. You can tell just how impressive that submission was because Louis Gleesman tried everything he could to power out of it. And he's incredibly strong, Kirik. But for Abdul Abdul Ragimov to sink that up so quickly with such ruthless proficiency and just cut across to the side expertly, you see Louis trying to roll out of that, trying to use strength. But that illustrates just how tight the squeeze is of Abdul Abdul Ragimov. I need to take a seat. Carlos Kramer, make it official. All right, Brave Nation, what an explosive finish to our co-main event of the evening. This comes to an end at two minutes and 50 seconds of round one. Your winner by head and arm triangle, Abdul Lazy King, Abdurakimov. This bout is three five minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This fan's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 184 centimeters tall and weighs already 75 kilograms. Representing Black's team and fighting out of Bilbao, Spain. Please welcome. Arkaid Ramos! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of seven wins, no losses, and one no contest. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 75.3 kilograms. Representing Venom Training Center, and fighting out of Paris, France. Give it up for Benoit, God of War, Sandani! <laughs> Your referee is Stefano Valente. Over Bello. very quickly. Huge leg kick to open up there. And these guys are trading heavy leather right away. No feeling out process whatsoever, but look at the laser type focus of Benoit God of War Santoni. That's a beautiful takedown. Lands right into the half guard position. Arkheis Ramos does a good job of maintaining guard, trying to get the sweep with that butterfly hook. Transition back in the half guard from Benoit Santoni. That was a very interesting takedown, Phil. A lot of fighters go for a slam there, but that slam can create little areas where the opponent can pop up. Instead, God of War gently put his opponent on his back, but it was very successful in keeping him there. He's now going to try and pass that guard. He went from a half guard to the beginnings of a quarter guard. He's going to take that left knee, presumably try and slide it across his opponent's hips, and then his opponent is in even worse shape. As we've seen on so many occasions, Kirik Benoit Santoni has a de devastating top game and like a hot knife through butter right into the mount positions. Grape vines the legs. That is stunning jujitsu. Stunning and very quick in less than one minute. He God has, of War took a shot and took his fighter right out of his game. As you say, Kerik, he has so much time here with which to work. Doing a great job of just isolating the hips of Arkhaiz Ramos, giving him greater control. Now switching momentarily to the Dagestani handcuff. 
People see. sometimes think that shots thrown from the mount because the hips aren't fully involved don't hit that hard. Believe me, they do. You're seeing somebody with extraordinary core strength here, and those shots hurt. Those shots are causing damage. Keep an eye out for the, the head arm triangle. Arkite's doing a good job to try and get some sort of guard back, was able to work to the half guard, but again, very similar position. It could just be a case of rinse repeat here for Benoit, God of War, saint -Denis. Half guard without the underhook when you're flat in your back is sort of like half mount. There's not a lot of offense you can do from there. And once again, Benoit could have gone to side control, instead chose to take mount. As you said, rinse, repeat, here comes the punches. As I alluded to, he won his last fight via head arm triangle. He may be trying to work that here. Just softening up Arkaid Ramos, who... You know, there's the start of the head arm triangle, pins the head down. This it's could be not, the... This is not just the start, Phil. And let's see if he chooses to flatten out, or he keeps a knee on the hip. This isn't even the beginning of the end. Oh, this is beautiful right jiu-jitsu. the middle of the end. Arkais Ramos trying desperately to mount some sort of offense, but could this be an inevitability? But look at what he does with the knee. I love that. He puts the knee on the hip. Beautiful hip Hulu. pressure on that knee, but our big, big, big props to Arkais for throwing shots from the bottom there. A lesser man would have tapped out by now already. Well, he's been in this position for quite a while. Is Benoit saint -Denis in trouble of perhaps burning out his arms? A normal fighter would be. This is not a normal fighter. Needs to drop. There's a the top! The second head arm triangle in three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and three losses. He stands 186 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.2 kilograms. Representing OB Fight Gym in Paris, France, please welcome Ibrahim. Ibra Mane! Mane! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 
85 centimeters tall, and weighs a ready 79.5 kilograms. Fighting out of Homestead Campsport, Sweden, give it up for David Fat Boy Slim Jakobsen! Our referee in charge of the action inside the cage is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Phil, there is no love in these gloves right now. We are about to find one thing, and that's who is meaner. Decky. Glove touch. That may be the last show of friendliness we're going to get for the next few minutes. Ibrahim Mane opening up with some serious kicks. Jakobsen remaining calm, looks completely on fears there. That's a huge leg kick by David Jakobsen. Phil, notice there is no feeling out in this fight thus far. These fighters are throwing with bad intentions. Ibrahim Mane, of course, a, more of a knockout artist. It'll be interesting to see what happens if this fight goes to the ground. Just as I say that, Ibrahim Mane on a huge no! single leg with a massive takedown. Fat Boy Slim is down. <laughs> Looks over the commentary with a wry smile. Clearly heard you, Kirik. But as I've said in the pre-fight build-up, David Jakobsen has some of the sneakiest, most intelligent jiu-jitsu I've seen. He lays little traps for his opponent, and before you know it, he's sinking something up. And there you go, Phil. Takedowns in MMA don't matter if you can't hold them down. We just saw potentially a huge moment in this fight from David Jakobsen. He popped right back up to standing, still pinned up against the fence, taking some punishment. We now have to see how he can fight off that cage. This is another critical part of the sport. Now he's just contesting with the, the sheer brute strength of Ibrahim Mane. He's trying to wear on his opponent, trying to, to drain him of his energy and eventually take him back down to the ground. Jakobsen doing a good job right now of defending. But again, Mane just trying to utilize some pure brute strength. Phil, watching Mane's language, I think he's going to try and take him down again. And if it fails, when he comes up, he's going to try for a back take. And he's almost there. He's trying to get to that back. Wasn't successful yet, but that's his strategy. Against someone like David Jacobson, he will have to get up very early in the morning to try and outwit this young man with regards to the jiu-jitsu aspect of the sport. Ibra Kumite is a tremendous striker. He understands striking and he... And yes, a and he's down. down! from David Jakobsen. Uses the position to his own benefit. Now bringing his opponent against the cage. And as we said, David Jakobsen may be a little bit of a joker outside of the cage, but inside it, he's as serious as they come. Again, trying to get that trip ticked down. Showing just how strong he, he is. Good use of the wizard by Ibrahim Mane, who now lands inside the very dangerous guard of David Jakobsen. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, we are now going to get an opportunity to watch Fat Boy Slim's guard game, which is highly refined. Like I say, he has the bicep control right now, potentially trying to set up a triangle. Looked like he was trying to sneak out. Armbar potentially here for David Jakobsen. Ibrahim Mane trying to stay as compact as possible. Armbar pass, big shot rained down. Again, a trip take down from again. David Jakobsen. Again, you have to say he's competing three weight divisions above that weight that he usually competes at. And he's showing that perhaps at the age of 24, he could be grow still growing into his body. Not only looks that, Phil, but what we've talked about is his striking. He's showing he's got wrestling too. And wrestling, of course, is what makes all things possible in this sport. Ibrahim Mane needs to be wary of turning into or turning away too much and giving up the back. He's trying to use the cage now to get himself back up again, but. David Jakobsen has that wrist. May see another takedown. And again, this is just relentless takedown work. He's letting Ibrahim Mane do the work of trying to get to his feet. Dagestani handcuff now from the Swede. That's a beautiful thing about mixed martial arts. You borrow from everywhere. Still has that wrist control and just cuts oh, Mount Phil. like a knife through butter into that mounted position. Mane trying to use his strength, but David Jakobsen may be trying to set up a rear naked choke here. Switches to a potential guillotine. If he's anything like his teammate Bobby Phil, Nystrom, he has a Phil huge squeeze on him. This is tight, Phil. Rolling into that anaconda. How tight is this? Fantastic this escape from Ibra Kumite. Now Ibra Kumite on top, and he looks like he's just trying to gather himself a little bit, but. 
It won't last long. Here comes the shots. Elbows are going to follow him. Potential for David Jakobsen to roll out of this or dig, dig in. He had that underhook. He needs to try and establish it again. 30 seconds left in the round. Jakobsen staying. Calm and collected. Ibra Kumite looking to trap that near arm so he can land shots unimpeded. If he's not able to get it, it's going to be the elbows, which we're seeing now. Oh, that's a huge elbow one landed from the by front, Ibra One from the back. And when the elbows are blocked, there comes the knee. Can David up to standing, get back looking up to for the back feet. take. Uh, too, I think it's a little bit too late in the round for Ibrahim Mane to get the rear naked choke. And survival now for the Time! final. Phil, what a fantastic back and fourth round. Takedowns from both sides. Submission attempts from both sides. Strikes from both sides. I could not ask for more. And the greater frequency of takedowns being landed by David Jakobsen. See both men starting off on the feet, throwing heavy, heavy shots. Distance closed, massive high crotch from Ibrahim Mane. But then from there, there was a little bit of a, a changing in the tide. From this over under position, David Jakobsen scores the trip takedown. And from there, came very close to potentially scoring an arm bar but Ibrahim Mane was wise to it. Just a real interesting, intricate exchange on the ground from both these men. But Phil, I could see good reason to call this round 10-9 or 9-10 either way. However, in my experience, judges put a lot of weight on who's in control at the very end, and that was, of course, Ibra Kumite. Well, based on my interpretation of what we've seen, I would be leaning towards the, the greater frequency of takedowns landed, and that was by David Jakobsen. Great, great, great arguments for both sides. Dickie Larkin gets us started, and again, it'll be interesting to see if they open up, both trying to land those par punches, those par kicks. Or will Ibrahim, Ibrahim Mane try and close the Woo, distance? That's nice inside, low kick. When you hear that foot slap, it hurts. Kick return from Jakobsen, but checked by Ibrahim Mane. Again, Mane with that clinch, just pressing his opponent up against the cage, making them carry his weight, making them feel just how strong he is. Jakobsen does a good job to separate. Needs to be careful of not being drawn into a firefight with a knockout artist like Ibrahim Mane. Mane seems very content right now to oh. stand in front of his opponent that's and let the strikes go. That's a huge leg kick from Ibrahim Mane. And again, if he's choosing just a strike in this round, he could do some serious damage, but Jakobsen, an incredibly intelligent fighter in his own right, may just be trying to beat Mane in and duck underneath for one of those takedowns that were successful for him in the first round. Stiff inside leg kick from Mane. Phil, I'm extremely impressed with Ibra Kumite striking. He's striking the inside of the thigh. He's striking at distance with his hands and all the way in the outside with those kicks. He's now dominating all ranges of strikes with the hands and feet. Those leg kicks are absolute money for Mane. And again, that may take a little bit of... Woo! That was a moment from the Matrix. Little bit of Sanchai style defense there from David Jakobsen. And there's only so many more of these kicks he can eat, Kirik. Is at the minute they are accumulating and they are going to be money in the bank for Ibrahim Mane. Phil, David Jakobsen believes in his striking. I think he's trying to set up a huge shot right now. He may even be willing to take a couple of shots if he can get a perfect read on his opponent's range and let that right hand go. Again, there's just the difference in the leg kicks. They're coming a little bit slower from David Jakobsen, but the power commanded by Mane just goes up top and he's not far away with a head kick. Phil, Mane has clearly done his shin conditioning. Kicking that leg is like kicking a, a, a light pole. It is not a pleasant thing to have happen when he manages to time it properly and check. Jumping deep from Ibrahim Mane, keeping his opponent exactly where he wants him within his kicking range. David Jakobsen really needs to start checking some of those kicks and just finishing the combination beautifully with the low calf kick. Body shot was big. Phil, we do not see enough body shots in mixed martial arts. That one momentarily crumpled his opponent. Again, it's really been about the kicking game of Ibrahim Mane. And I like the way when he is throwing combinations, he's finishing with the legs. 
which I think is very smart. But at the minute, Jakobsen really has no answer for those devastating leg kicks. Mane carefully measuring, stalking his opponent, waiting for that moment to unleash a knockout shot. But don't count Fat Boy Slim out of this when he's doing the same thing while he's backpedaling. He, both these fighters are looking to knock the other out in a split second. And again. Nobody's looking for a takedown, Phil. Oh, Mane charging forward, throwing with reckless abandon. Again, only ever one second away from knocking his opponent out. Of course, does have four knockout wins on his ledger. Jakobsen had questioned Mane's chin. I think that question has now been answered. I got a chin. He's got some hands, too. Jakobsen may be getting just a little bit frustrated there. You see, he just bit down on the, the mouthpiece and was swinging back wild. Phil, ordinarily, pushing up against the cage like this is to slow a fight down, clear your head. I think Mane is trying to set up something bigger than that. He's got double unders. I think what you're seeing him do so expertly is wearing on his opponent and zapping them of their strength so that when they do disengage, he's the stronger fighter who can land those power shots. He does, of course, Phil, know that he's the larger fighter. He's wisely taking advantage of that. Watch out for the trip from David Jakobsen. Not unlike the trip he attempted and was successful with in the first round. But Ibrahim Mane, for my money at the minute, does look like the fresher fighter. Mane's corner is calling, calling for him to fight in French. Lute, fight, fight, and he ends. He oh, listens to his corner. Lands a huge He's strike. He's letting it go. Ten seconds left, and Ibrahim Mane landing absolutely Woo! huge strikes on David Jakobsen, who just absorbed them. At one stage, looked like he was potentially kept up by the cage post. But I want to see the closing stanza of that fight again. Green Hill replay, walk us through, Phil. There you see just that expert kicking game of Ibrahim Mane. David Jakobsen doing everything he could to try and reply. But as we said, did not quite have an answer for them. Here we see the closing stanzas where both men swing wild. Ooh. There's that beautiful straight right down the middle from Ibrahim Mane landing clean. And this is where David Jakobsen needs to dig deep. He's potentially two rounds down. It could potentially be one apiece again. Comes down to the interpretation of the judges, but David Jakobsen really needs to take this fight to Ibrahim Mane. Phil, Ibra's corner got tired of him pushing his opponent up against the fence. They shouted for him to fight. He waited about two seconds and he fought. I do believe if that shout from the corner had come another five seconds earlier, the fight could be over. Third and final round of another scintillating battle here at Brave Combat Federation 42. And again, do not count David Jakobsen out of this fight. He is a nasty, vicious, powerful striker. As we've alluded to, after the way the second round went, it really has to be right here, right now for Fat Boy Slim to try and make something happen. Or will it be Ibrahim Mane with those power kicks again? Big shots. He's crumpling him. Mane may be smelling a little bit of blood in the water. David Jakobsen doing everything he can to survive, implementing lateral movement to try and get away. But there's only so many shots he can eat from someone like Ibrahim Mane. Oh, Mane landing hellacious ground and point from that position. Saw a little bit of a gap, landed a crushing blow. Talk strategy, Phil, at this point. If you were Mane, would you stand up, return it to striking? Would you stay here, perhaps try to pass guard and win with strikes? Well, right now, if you're Mane, there, there hasn't really been anything offensively striking-wise from Jakobsen that's caused him any trouble. So I would be standing right back up, trying to throw hands and score that knockout. We're in agreement, Phil. He's now inside a closed guard, and we know that boy Slim is dangerous from here. If I, if I can just finish my point, Carrick, as I was saying, it's he's... he's this is exactly where it's going to be dangerous for David Jakobsen. We've seen him digging for the underhook there. Potentially there's an armbar here for him, closing the guard, getting it back. Very dangerous, very slick off his back. I have to imagine Mane's corner is telling him, stand up and out of there, get out of there. And it does get that much more difficult to submit your opponent when you're tired. When both of you are slick with sweat, it does become very difficult. 
right now I cannot imagine the advantage that Mane has from here. He had his opponent rocked standing. David Jakobsen looked like he was potentially trying to set up a triangle there at one stage. Does have an underhook. Attempted the sweep there, but Ibrahim Hips were just too heavy for him. Has a foot on the hip, maybe trying to, to switch for an arm bar at some stage here. If we see him isolate the arm, he's digging underneath it, but we just don't know how much he has left in the tank to try and get an arm bar carry. Jakobsen is showing nice grappling setups. He may be gassed to an extent. He may not have enough to launch an all-out knockout attack, but he absolutely can throw a submission here. He's looking for a triangle. He's got the wrist. He's got that wrist controlled. If he can stuff it down to the hip, throw his right leg over the top, the fight could be over. Mane, obviously being an astute martial artist, will be acutely aware of what he's trying to do and has never been submitted, it must be said, in his professional mixed martial arts career. Mane, Mane. Jakobsen was looking for a chest bump, chest sweep, probably wanted to look for a guillotine on the way back, but was driven back by Ibra Kumite. Kumite now driving his opponent to the fence. If your opponent is trying to stand up, sometimes you want to keep him away from the fence. If your opponent is trying to submit you, where Ibra Kumite is taking his opponent right now is extremely intelligent. It shuts off half the hip movement right there. We may see David Jakobsen trying to circle off a little bit, maybe use the wall, the cage wall to walk a little bit, but 90 seconds left. Can he summon the energy from somewhere to pull a rabbit out of the hat? Or will Ibrahim Mane continue in very much the same fashion as he has in this fight by dictating the pace, controlling where the action goes? Mane just seems to be happy to land these little pot shots. Deggy Larkin giving both fighters enough time with which to work. Every time Mane's hips come up, Jakobsen tries to take advantage of it. Thus far, he's been thwarted. There's a pass to half guard. Highly unlikely he gets to mount. Top half guard. Much less dangerous position when you're Opponent's back is up against the cage. And again, you might see David Jacobson try and transition here, but Mane a, little, Mane a little bit smarter to it now, going for that four on four grip of his own. Potential for a fireman here from David Jacobson and on a single of his own. Does he have enough in the tank to make something happen? Big turnaround in this fight, Phil. Is there enough? Time left. But with only 10 seconds, I believe, left in the round. Is it a case of a little bit too little, too late for David Jakobsen? Money looking for the neck, and it's over. What a fantastic battle of wills. A fantastic war of attrition from both men. David Jakobsen clearly tired, but gave absolutely everything he had in those final stanzas, Kirik. Absolutely. Big, big credit to David, Fat Boy Squint Slim Jakobsen moving up a division or two in order to take this fight. And let's see what we got on the Green Hill replay. You can see just in the final round, Ibrahim Mane looked like he was trying to score that knockout with charging forward with big shots. And then in the very, very final 15, 10 seconds, a very tired David Jakobsen does enough to score a takedown, but Again, scores being tabulated right now by the judges. It's going to be a unanimous, a unanimous decision, Phil, but I'm not sure every judge is going to call it 30-27. I think we may see a 29-28 a in there. Yeah, if you were to give one round to David Jacobson, I believe it would be that first round in which I think he scored potentially four or five takedowns. But as the fight progressed, it became about the, the strength and cardio of Ibrahim Mane. He was just able to maintain that type of pressure, maintain that type of pace that David Jacobson couldn't contend with. Ibrahim Mane, of course, potentially, if he has won this fight, he's exercised the 
the ghosts of that last Brave Combat Federation appearance at Brave 31, Durban, South Africa. David Jagemson still 24, still lots left in the tank, and this is going to be a wonderful learning experience for him. But for right now, let's make it official, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave 42 cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first two judges score about 30-27. Your last judge scores about 29-28 for a unanimous decision victory for your fighter out of the blue corner, Ibrahim Ibramane! This next bout is three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins, four losses, and one no contest. He stands 171 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 64.8 kilograms. Representing Lion Fight Gym and fighting out of France, please welcome Brees Lion Kid Pico. And his opponent, fighting! Out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 16 wins and 7 losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.2 kilograms. Representing Le Bon Ecole and fighting out of Montpellier, France by way of Algeria. Give it up for the former Brave Combat Federation featherweight champion of the world, Elias. Smile, but that's down. Hey, this is Brave 52 in association with the Golden Cage. Calling the action is myself, Phil Campbell, the OG of Mixed Martial Arts, Carrick Janess. Second fight of the night sees former champion Elias Smile Book Days. I'm taking on the former French national champion in a number of combat sports, Brice Picot. We are ready to go. Watch the distance between these two fighters, Brave Nation. Picot wants it to be a big distance. Smile wants it to be no distance. Oh, big shot by Brice Picot, right, to open up. The attention and potentially earn the respect, but there's the takedown attempt from Smile Big Days Down, and this is not where you want to be if you're Brice Picot, especially it's at this stage of the fight where they're both dry. Look out for the guillotine. Moment. He made it up. It's a huge moment. It's hard to take somebody down in the sport, and it's even harder to keep them down. Already a little bit of marking up on the face of Elias Smile Book Days Dam, showing just how hard Brees Pico hits. Lion Kid landed a big, big shot. Smile did exactly what he should do. Change it. No longer stand and trade. Take it down to the map, but he was not able to keep his opponent there. Brees Pico absolutely relentless with those big winging overhands. Smile just needs to weather the early storm here. Brave Nation, some fighters will use, particularly in the opening moments of the round, they'll use the kicking to range find, to, to, to buy them time. These are bombs, and this is what happens when you throw a bomb. Oh, it leads you open to big takedowns like this. Huge takedown, but look at the front yeah. triangle attempt. Can he, can he get, doesn't like him. Can he get the 10th triangle? I believe win. this is it, Phil. I oh, believe the this tab. is it.
our second fight of the night. This comes to an end at 1 minute and 31 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by triangle, Elias Zvaro! Your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and four losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.1 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team, Ross de la Hiva, and fighting out of Nantes, France. Please welcome the challenger, Amin. Fierceness! Uh, yo! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and two losses. He stands 190 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.1 kilograms, representing Full house and fighting out of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Give it up for the reigning, defending, undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Clayton Predator Silva. For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Brave Nation, you are about to witness arguably the toughest challenge in all of sports. Five rounds of five minutes of mixed martial arts fighting, but it is not going to go five rounds. Decky Larkin almost had to get involved and separate these two guys before the fight even became official. Speaking of official, we are underway in the main event at Brave Combat Federation 44. Big kick to open up from Clayton Silva. Predator stalking, fainting, and landing. Low kick was checked solidly. Oh, beautiful short hook from uh, Amina Ayub just as Clayton was coming in. Amina Ayub seems to have developed his timing already, but with that said, Clayton Predator Silva lands a shot to the face. Spinning back fist attempt by Fierceness. Has the double, double underhooks, may try and trip an inside or outside leg here. Beautiful! Successful land! The Predator's back to standing! Predator pops right back up, but Amin still has those double underhooks. This is already turning into an incredible battle. As we know, Clayton Silva can snatch on a submission from anywhere, so you have to be respectful. Potentially, looked like he was trying to go for the back. Predator swarming. Right. So an opportunity to get in the hips. Hands are together, and the fighter is down. Needs to be wary of the guillotine choke, something Amin Ayub is particularly well versed in. He did beat Jamal Chan via first or third round guillotine in his brief CF debut. Head pops out, expect a rain of elbows to come. Clayton Predator Silva applying pressure to the face so he can control his opponent while moving his head back. Amin Ayub very carefully and cleverly controlling his opponent's arms, having mixed results. Clayton Silva just taking his time methodically, working through his processes right now. May try and just pop that leg out and escape either into the full mount or into the side control position, but as you say at the minute, Amin Ayub is doing everything he can to lock up the BJJ brown belt. Brave Nation, it can be a little bit hard to see, a little bit hard to appreciate, but what Amin Ayub is doing right now is absolutely fantastic. He just had a couple of short punches for his trouble. He's trying to get out onto his hip, uh, onto his hip and try. Arm bar attempt! He's trying to hit that arm bar typed in. Predator is out! This is a beautiful display of groundwork from both men. You can 
see Rolando D keeping a close eye on the action. I've also been talking to Sam Patterson today who said that he is the rightful number one contender and he is keeping a very close eye on this fight. Second submission attempt, Phil. It was the beginnings of an old plot to buy. I mean, fierce to say you, but it was denied by Predador. Predador using those long limbs to try and get off some offense, but again, needs to be wary of the Ume Plata. I mean, I hope showing just how much of a dangerous submission fighter he is as well. Absolutely frenetic pace set by both men in the opening stanzas. Surely this is not sustainable for five, five minute rounds in the championship fight. Phenomenal guard being shown by Ayub here. He's showing exactly what to do when you're on your back and you've got a dangerous world-class striker on top of you. He's controlling the hips Again, trying and to he's hit shifting about looking for the arm bar. I can see a little bit of blood already. I'm not sure who that blood is coming from, but that looks like a deep arm bar. Predator Silva doing the right thing by staying compressed and stacking, but that looks like he's extending it. He may go belly down on this. Beautiful jiu-jitsu, beautiful defense, but Amin Ayub is relentless. He's already bloodied up the champion. Trying to get that elevator sweep. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is jiu-jitsu. This is using position, even when you're on bottom, to protect yourself and from that protected place, launch attacks. Try and use a sweep, which is flipping over until you're on top, the opponent's on, on the bottom, or try and go for a submission, as we, have, as we have seen repeatedly from fierceness. Smart bicep control by Amin Ayub. He had a cheeky little cage grab just before to readjust his position. And when he's on his back, you can always see that he's trying to work the hips. He's trying to throw up a submission, trying to create angles for himself. Potentially, you could be seeing a, a first round here where a fighter is winning a fight off his back. That is, in a, that is the power of jiu-jitsu. No other martial art allows you to win a fight when you're on your back. That's a losing situation in every other art. Big elbow landed by the champion Clayton Silva just to close out the round. But again, Amin Ayub trying to work a submission with those hips. What a first round of action, Kirik. Absolutely fantastic round by both fighters. Phil, if you had to play judge, who would you call 10-9? Who would you call 9-10? Realistically, as I said in the, the, the closing stanzas of the round there, potentially you're looking at Amin Ayub winning a fight off his back. And there you see some of the exchanges. Amin Ayub landing a lovely little short shot. Just glance the chin of Clayton Silva with that spinning back fist and some beautiful work here to get the takedown, but the champion springs right back up. Nice takedown work there, but again, the, the hips of Amin Ayub constantly throwing up the likes of an armbar. Very, very interesting fight unfolding here in Prospect. Deke Larkin making sure that there's no ice, no water on the floor, making sure that the corners and the seconds clean it thoroughly. There's not a lot gets past the bandit. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is Deki Larkin. He is the head of regulation here. He makes sure everything that happens in the Brave Combat Federation cage happens by the book. He felt a little bit of moisture on the floor. He wasn't happy with the job the corner did drying it up and so he's drying it up himself that way there is no accidental slippage an accidental slippage can turn a fight in a second it can even turn an ankle or a knee you don't want any excess liquid in the cage i think decky has now cleaned that he has just about cleaned the brave combat federation floor to his liking and he is seconds away from starting up round two of this five round world title fight. It's on round two. Little touch of the gloves from both men showing that whilst they may be throwing barbs at each other on social media, they respect the skill level and endeavor of one another when inside the Brave Arena. 
Clayton keeping the hands a little bit low. Tries to spin him back fist, but Amin always has a counter hook loaded. Side kick to the knee from Fierceness. Very smart technique to use on, a, on an opponent that's got longer reach. Nice hook again there from Amin Ayo, predicated off the kick from Clayton Silva. Interesting exchange. Fierceness took a calf kick, but he went straight through and landed that left hook. That's a little window into his thinking right now. Even if he gets hit, he's going to continue moving forward, trying to dictate his fight. But realistically, Carrick, there's only so many of those types of kicks you can take before your, your stance, before your, your pop and your shots is impeded. It's 100% the case. If that tibialis muscle gets hit directly three times, can even be two or one, you can lose control of the ankle and no longer be able to move efficiently. Oh, charging forward is Amin Ayub, landing a big overhand. And his counter striking is looking very clean here. Bound to be growing in confidence with the shots he's landing. Already marked the champion up and bloodied the nose. Predator Silva now is trying to measure his opponent. He's trying to get a clear, clear sense of his opponent's speed, timing, and reach. Once he feels like he gets that, he can start to counter. You can see another contender in the lightweight division, Ahmed Amir, keeping a close eye on the action again. Him and Clayton almost got into it at the weigh-ins yesterday, so be interesting to see his take on the fight. Brave Nation, watch the eyes of Predator Silva right now. His concentration is at 100%. He is taking in everything that his opponent is showing him, trying to download it and use it to time counters of his own. I mean, now you're trying to land that leaping hook and he's doing a great job of, of almost fighting at range against the taller guy. He's, he's very intelligently using that sidekick to the lead thigh, possibly to the lead knee to keep his opponent at, at a distance that he's comfortable with. And again, you saw that calf kick land and you saw fierceness fight through it and land those shots. That is the heart of a warrior right here. If things don't go his way initially, he's gonna continue moving forward until they do. Predator now trying to initiate the clinch and get the takedown. The first fight fought mostly on the ground. Second round so far, sorry, first round fought mostly on the ground. Second round, more of a stand up battle between the two, but clinch being initiated right now. And again, it is that nasty zapping part, energy zapping part of mixed martial arts carry. Fierceness decided he wanted to fight at distance, separates. Front kick not too far off the mark from Predator. Interesting adaption, interesting new tac uh, tactics that we're seeing from Clayton Predator Silva. Nice roll under from Amin Ayub, and he's really starting to chop down that lead leg with low calf kicks, with beautiful push kicks. He is, Silva may launch front kicks to the face of his own. He's trying to counter those, those long range kicks with his own longer ranges kick, longer range kicks, like that hook kick attempt to the head. But that's something that Amin is doing so well. He's landing his shots in the pocket and managing to get out without taking too much damage. Thus far, Phil, I am calling this round for Amin Fierceness Ayub. Clayton Predator in on the takedown. He has the clinch, he has that over under clinch position with his arms being so long and his legs being so long, there's potential for a trip takedown here. Clayton Silva is a brilliant fighter. He's trying different strategies. He tried to punch, he tried to kick at mid range. He tried to kick it out at a farther range and now he's trying his luck in the clinch. He's trying his luck in the 50-50 against the Brave Combat Federation cage. Nice little foot stomp there from Amin Ayub, or as Nolo Keith would say, a dirty, dirty foot stomp. Nice little short elbow. And again, fight being contested in the clinch, and that's a great knee from Amin Ayub. He feels like he's hurt, Clayton Silva. And there's the take on good use of the wizard by Amin Ayub, but he wasn't able to spring back up. Predator may just take these 10 seconds to get the wind back on his seals because that knee, that pop knee to the lever, I think hurt Clayton Silva. It did, and he did what he needed to do. He got himself into a situation where he could rest momentarily on top. Took advantage of it. He's taking a slow walk back to his corner. 
Phil, call that round for me. 10, 9, 9, 10. An incredibly tight round. I do give the slight advantage to Amin Ayub. I think he did have the advantages in the striking. He was landing the cleaner shots. He was being a little bit more proactive as opposed to reactive in the fight. We are one on that, Phil. I think that the champion has got to do something a little bit differently. He's been responding tactically. When his opponent strikes and maybe outstrikes him to a degree, he'll move to kicks. Then he gets outstruck by kicks and he throws kicks on the outside. When that doesn't go his way, he moves into the inside, into the clinch, into the 50-50. But I think what he needs to do now, in three words, is turn it up. This is, both men do look a little bit tired, but it's not because they feel, it's not because they're not conditioned well, it's because that they are literally forcing each other to expel as much energy as they can to get the upper hand in this fight. Phil Decky Larkin actually had to move fierceness back. He's so eager to jump back into this fight. He was walking to the center cage. Decky pushed him back, so get back to your corner, son. And it's on round three. Again, Amin Ayub charging forward, taking the center. Does look a little bit the fresher fighter, Carrick. He is. Amin Ayub feels like he won the first two rounds by however close a, a, a margin. He feels like he's got the range of his opponent. He feels like he has the advantage both on the outside and the inside, and he's now going to press it. Clayton now with some beautiful movement to cut the angles on Clayton Silva. Very, very slick head movement as Ayub moved forward. I think he did get the advantage of that exchange. Forced Clayton Predator Silva into the 50-50. And now Ayub has reversed it, and he's pushed his opponent back up against the cage. Brave Nation, when your opponent's hips are stuck against that cage, the strikes are no longer effective. Momentarily, Clayton Silva looked like he was about to take the back like he does so well. But one thing I've noticed is Clayton Silva's moving back in straight lines with his chin a little bit high. I think if you see Amin Ayub try and throw maybe threes and fours, he may catch Clayton Silva going backwards. That certainly is his intent. We have seen a multiplication in his attack. He started off with single attacks and then doubles. He's moved his way up to triple shots now. Would not surprise me if at some point in this round he flurries and goes for it. Green Silva strikes are coming a little bit more labored than they were in the first round. That Mike Gary is something I expected to see just a little bit more. When Clayton Silva wasn't doing well against the side kicks, he threw that front kick up to the head, very intelligent technique. It, with a shorter opponent, even when the opponent is very far on the outside, it allows you to land. Uppercut just shy off the mark from Amin Ayub. Clayton Silva looks like he has the hands connected. Big take down from the champion. Phil, it's hard to take him down. Sometimes it's even harder to keep him. I mean, I have momentarily thought about the guillotine. He switched it to the opposite side. He has that knee shield in. He's in guillotine guard right now. Armin. But right now, if he holds on to that, there is a potential Von Flu choke here for Clayton Silva. I mean, I have does the right thing, lets the head go, trying to frame off on the arm. Needs to dig in for the underhook and get underneath the body of Predator. Does a good job to recover half guard. Predator inching his way up. He's inch, he inched his way up to that left underhook. He inched his way up into that top half guard, which can successfully be used to control the opponent's hips. And very shortly, you should see him posture back and try and land some shots. I mean, I will be able to recover full guard. And as we saw in round one, he is incredibly dangerous off his back. Puts a foot on the hip, may try and cut an angle here. Clayton Predator Silva very intelligently taking the fight close to the cage. When your opponent is next to the cage, sideways, half the direction that his hips can go in is removed. And you only need to fear the hips popping out and setting up a submission in one direction. That makes it much easier oh, look for at the, the hips. top look fighter. The hips. There's the there arm. is an arm bar in place now. Can he get Get full extension on that arm bar, trying to dig in. Mage look to rule champion Clayton Silva. The angle of the elbow is not quite there. He's trying just to peel those hands apart and hip into it. This is a tangled weave of bodies. That looks tight. Can he get the point of the elbow? And the champion is out. This is incredibly exciting for Jitsu. Brave Nation, that one hurt.
People talk about how strikes hurt, submission attempts don't. That one hurt. With each submission attempt, Amin Ayub is edging ever so slightly closer. Trying to isolate the arm of the champion and throw those hips up, throw the legs up for the arm bar. There's going for it again. Oh, that one looks a little bit deeper. The point of the elbow looks right in against the, the fulcrum. Sweep is almost completed. Oh, that looks tight. Can he get full extension on it? He's trying to rule the champion. Fantastic defense from Clayton Silva. He's doing the right thing. He grabs his bicep here, almost like a rear naked choke to defend and stack in. And then you can start to jimmy that arm out just a little bit. Phil, that elbow is out. The elbow is now clear. The fighter on top is safe, but he is not winning these exchanges. Clayton Silva trying to, to get momentarily that arm bar again, but what an exciting display of jiu-jitsu. Great offensive jiu-jitsu, great submission defense. Big shot! Roy heard him! Shots from the inside! He heard him right at the end of the third round. Amin Ayub showing his diversity of attacks. First with the submissions, then with big strikes. Predator Silva sucking wind hard as he walks back to his corner. Somebody get a stool underneath that man so he can recover. Amin Ayub, no question. 10 Nine. There you see the massive takedown from Clayton Silva. But from there, it was Amin Ayub who was being the most dangerous again. Potentially, Amin Ayub has won a round off his back. Once again, that is the power of Jiu Jitsu. He rocked him with those big shots. Deggy Larkin forced to step in at the end of the round there. Sometimes in mixed martial arts, we get overwhelming displays of the power of wrestling. They're not always exciting. What we're getting here is a display of the power of jiu-jitsu, and it is exciting. A lot of excess moisture on Amin Ayub here. You just, you have to wonder how much those uppercuts are going to affect Clayton Silva. He's only had a minute to recover, and it was right at the end. Phil, shots to the body, as we know, are cumulative. If you take a shot to the body 30 seconds later, the next one is going to feel worse than if you hadn't. Shots to the head or not. 10 to 15 seconds on the outside after a big head shot. Ordinarily, the fighter's head is clear. I think Clayton Selva's head is clear, but I believe he is down three rounds to none now. I believe in order to win this fight, he needs to stop his opponent. And I think you're gonna see Amin Ayub put the pressure on from the very first moment, knowing that he hurt the champion at the end of that third round. Clayton Silva just teasing with the knee there, letting Amin Ayub know that it's there. Phil, we're going to start to see fierceness counter more aggressively. He's not simply going to block a shot when it comes in. Once he's countered that shot, either via head movement or another defensive technique, he's going to start to swarm his opponent. Again, the shot's coming just that little bit more labored for Clayton Silva. I mean, Ayub looking like the fresher fighter, throwing the spinning back fist, just shy with it. Now putting the pressure on the champion, working the body a little bit. Nice long range kicks from the champion. Nice head movement again from Amin Ayub. Just evades the strike and replies with his own. Phil, these two are playing a dangerous game right now. Oh, he's standing, standing in the pocket. Oh, he's shaking. He's down. He's down. He's and he's out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new. Lightweight and champion new, of the world. And new, wow. and new champion of the world. I mean, fierceness. Are you? Take a bye, young man. He is now at the top of the table. He has knocked out the champion and definitively claimed the lightweight championship of the world. Absolutely savage performance against an absolutely savage fighter.
gonna push it up a level higher. Well, the lightweight title picture just became wide open. You have Sam Patterson, you have Ahmed Amir, you have Rolando D, you have the new champion, Amin Ayub, you have the former champion, Luan Miao Santiago. The lightweight division is stacked, it is on fire. Phil, not only do we have Rolando D, he's actually standing by the cage, trying to get a piece of him right now. Legend flowing through my veins. Rolando D is this? in the building. Ahmed Amir is in the building. Sam Patterson is watching at home. Our president, Mohammed the Hawk Shahid, is slowly entering the Brave Combat Federation cage in order to wrap the belt around the champion. I would love to see that finish back, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Charging forward, the chin oh. of Clayton was up, and boom, there you go. Big shot, Takey Larkin diving right in. Doesn't take a punch this time like he did from Mo Fakhredin. Clayton Silva was going back with that chin a little bit too high in the air. I mean, I have recognized it and finished with a beautiful flurry of strikes to become the new Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world. Brave Nation, what an incredible main event at Brave CF 44. Unbelievable fight. This comes to an end at one minute, 23 seconds of round number four. Your winner by knockout and new Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Amin Fierceness. Brave Nation, this next battle is our co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and five losses. He stands 174 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 65.7 kilograms. Representing Elista, Republic of Kalmukia, and fighting out of Russia, please welcome Bayer Stanton. And his opponent, fighting! Out of the red corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and one loss. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.1 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Lyon, France, please welcome Giannis, the Desert Warrior. Game Fight book cage MC of the year. Right now we are all about by your stepping and Yanis Gomori. Gomori taking the center early. Bayer shifting very smoothly from a southpaw to an orthodox stance and back. Very unpredictable and dynamic is by your stepping. But Yanis Gomori very traditional in his K1 style and it is very, very effective. Giannis not quite warmed up yet, doesn't quite have his timing down. Ran into an elbow with that kick. Good movement from Stepan, changing levels well, giving Giannis Gamori plenty to think about. Gamori maintaining that center. Oh, push kick to the knee really makes me shudder sometimes. Nice inside leg kick from Stepan. 
By a very smart, pops in, throws a single shot, goes flying back to a safe distance. Giannis Gamori is coiled right now, just ready to let go with his hands, waiting for the right moment. Hasn't found it yet. Gamori's more in the counter striking phase at the moment. It's a good game plan from Steppen. Constant movement. Giving Gamori lots of different looks, throwing lots of feints. Neither fighter has found a range with the hands yet, but some decent leg kicks landed by both men. Giannis is just a little bit tight, not as loose as he usually is. Woo! Rear leg hook kick to the head, very rarely seen in mixed martial arts cage. Oh, oh, got away with one there, did Giannis Gamori. That's what happens when we've seen it already tonight. When you try something dynamic like a spinning attack like that, you can end up giving the back. Giannis landed that. Front kick to the body, very nicely. Landing a low kick, he's starting to find his timing now. Got a sense of range. Oh, nice shot, little short shot there from by your stepping. The game plan of Gamori seems to be take out the lead leg of by your stepping. Interesting to see the evolution of mixed martial arts where fighters shift back and forth now. South Florida Orthodox on a near continual basis. This is not your grandfather's boxing. <laughs> Gamori very much leading the dance so far. Oh, just as I say that commentator's curse, he gets hit with a little shot. Those leg kicks are just different, aren't they, Kirik? It's a nasty impact we're seeing right now. The whip he manages to get in. Took Giannis Gamori a minute or two to get his timing down, get his range down, but I do believe he's got it. Gamori now inside, Paul. Stepping through a little bit wide there, but it's light on the feet. Stepping shots a little bit wide and his chin's just a little high. Nice work from Gamori. Invested in the leg kicks, then went high. Nice little bit of misdirection. Oh, Stepin really throws everything into his shots, doesn't he, Kirk? Trying he to sure does. Trying to get that knockout punch. He may not be giving himself quite enough distance to get a knockout from that hand. Spin and back kick, just brushing the torso of Gamori. Very, very tactical opening rounds here at Brave Combat Federation 67, live from Combat Kingdom Bahrain. Kick may go on a little bit low. One of the downsides, Brave Nation, of shifting from your one side forward to the other is you can get caught right in the middle of it. I believe that's what happened there. Bayer was shifting from one side forward to the other, and kick to that was intended to go to the thigh went a little bit low. Double touch of the hands, double good sportsmanship. Axe kick, don't see that a lot. You can see what Bayer Steppen was thinking. Another spinning back kick. 10 second clapper thought about the tick down. Gamori fakes a little bit of a spin there. Brave Nation, Bill and I are commentators tonight. We are not acting as judges, although we have together judged many, many hundreds of fights over the years. Phil, call it. Who do you like in that one? 10 9, 9 10. If I don't like it, we're going to argue. <laughs> I would be inclined to go 10 9, Giannis Gamori, just by virtue of the fact that he was controlling the ebb and flow of the fight and he was landing what I believe were the more damaging shots. It's unanimous then. I think he I think he not only landed the most number of shots, I think he landed the cleanest, hardest ones as well. You can see some of the work here from the first round. Big shot over the top from Giannis Gamori. 
But by your step, an always dangerous carry. He's always capable of pulling out something dynamic, something spinning, something that could potentially end the fight. But as we say, very tactical battle so far between these two combatants. If Bayer is down just a little bit, which we do believe he is, he's going to want to show something a little bit different in this round. Let's see if that happens. Another double touch of the hands. Yeah, Bayer's turning it up a little bit. His corner's told to be more aggressive, and he listened. At this point, Brave Nation, it is not going to be hard for these two to hit each other. Nice shot there from Giannis Gamori right down the middle. Those kicks are starting to add up. They're really an investment, aren't they, Kirik? Yeah, low kicks to the thigh, to the calf, our money in the bank. When you get hit in the head for five to 10 seconds, things are going what's called queer street. Everything's a little bit fuzzy, then you're back to normal. You hit in the leg, it's not back to normal in five or 10 seconds. Sometimes it's not back to normal the next day. Greatest example of that is probably Jose Aldo, Uriah Faber, back in the day. I kind of get the impression that Gamori is landing each time in the same spot. A little bit of a cut on the leg of Gamori, maybe from checking a kick. Yeah, Gamori really has the, the measure of the kicking range, doesn't he? Second time he's done that double hand catch. People pull it off in Sanda, but MMA, not so much. Hands are a little bit too low. Nice, stalk, nice stalking work here from Gamori. The intensity from Stepan seems to have tailed off just a little bit. Not far away with the kick, more so on the gloves. Ow. Is that a technical term, Kerry? That was my technical response to that. <laughs> Brave Nation, it happened right in front of us. You can see it's the same spot he's hitting every time. It is that that shin, Brave Nation, is sinking through the, the meat of the thigh and clamming, ba banging right down hard against the bone underneath. And that's something that casual fans don't necessarily understand. When you're kicking your opponent, you're not using your foot, you're using the shin. So it's a tantamount to a baseball bat being swung right into the meat of the thigh or into the lower calf. Believe it or not, Brave Nation, a well-conditioned shin can actually break a baseball bat. And pretty much a lifetime of engaging in the striking arts for Yanis Gamori has calcified those shins, making it incredibly hard. Midway point of the fight. Yanis Gamori again for me, landing the more intense strikes. It was almost tie style catch and reply. And you can see Yanis Gamori growing in confidence as the fight progresses, Kirik. He's not giving Bayer Step in any space to settle whatsoever, expertly cutting off the angles. He's getting through with that jab as well. You can see what he uses that jab. To there you go. He's going to use the jab. Having luck with the jab, he's going to feint it and then start coming in with other things behind it. You can see Giannis Gamoy turning up the intensity a little bit more. Player step and fix the takedown. He only shot once so far in the fight, and that was at the end of the first round. He may have shown his hand with the takedown. Gamoy. Being such an intelligent fighter, probably has an uppercut loaded or a pop knee loaded. Trying to faint with the right, and that's it, coming from a different angle. Oh, oh Stepan's hurt, limb. I think. I think Stepan's legs hurt. By your Stepan's shorts have ridden up just a little bit. You can see very visible redness, damage, swelling on that thigh. If he continues with this kind of frequency, you could be looking at a TKO due to leg kicks. That's what we're seeing the beginning of right here. That one went up to the hip. Bayer stepping, 
change stances. You can see that's usually international MMA language for you've hurt the leg. Oh, oh. close there. Oh, beautiful accumulation of shots. Over. Oh, it that is, is it. over. Yanis Gomori with an incredible finish here at Brave CF67. Invested in the leg kicks. They were absolute money for him. Death by low kicks. There was an unfortunate statement back in the day, Phil. Leg kicks, an infamous statement. Leg kicks don't end fights. <laughs> I think we have just seen that they very much do, carry. Phenomenal performance by the French-Algerian desert warrior, Yanis Gimori. Showed superior footwork, punching, kicking technique, strategy, and there you saw it right there. The fight ended via low kick. Again, Yanis Gamori, I want to emphasize how good his sportsmanship is. When he landed that low kick, saw his opponent buckle, he turned to the referee and said, hey, do you want to stop it? Referee said, fight on. He fought on, and Big Arm broke it just as an elbow was about to land. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 67 cage. This comes to an end at four minutes and 44 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO, Giannis, the Desert Warrior, Gambari! is three, five and a rounds in a catch weight bout of 77 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.96 kilograms. Representing Gladiator Fight Gym and fighting out of Brazil, please welcome Mateus Miranda. <laughs> and his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.8 kilograms. Representing KHK, Team Bahrain, and Boxing Squad, and fighting out of Nice, France. Put your hands together for Axel Sosa. Real interesting fight in progress here. Miranda, fantastic jiu-jitsu fighter, fantastic exponent of the art. May try and take Axel down right from the get-go because Axel has incredible boxing out of that southpaw stance. You can see he's very light on the feet. Miranda, a little bit more stoic in his approach right from the get-go. Touch your gloves and we are away. Look for Sola to use the jab to devastating effect and looks the much bigger man in there. Phil, if you put Mateusz's fights on a graph, it's 108, 59, 46, then 35 seconds. Nice kick to the body. Oh, huge kick. Beautiful timing on it from Axel Sola. Sola just so calm in there. You forget that this is only his fifth professional bout. Same goes for Miranda, who's diving on a leg without setting it up. How good is the takedown defense of Sola? Finds himself taken down. Phil, the takedown defense of Alex Sola is brilliant. We're so seeing something even better, though. The jiu-jitsu of Miranda trying to get that first round finish. How good is the submission defense of Axel Sola? Brilliant. And this is usually around the time that statistically Miranda finishes his fights. Trying to work to get that second hook in. Brave Nation, Axel Sola is trying to stop Miranda's left 
foot from getting in the hip. He completely shut it down. Miranda now transitioning potentially to a leg lock. That too completely shut down. Great work from Axel Sola. The awareness, the acuteness he is showing there. And he may just be sneaking his way. Maybe looking for a Darce choke. What a feather in his cap this would be. Good work for Miranda to get up, but may eat some shots here. Free him off elbow potentially for Axel Sola if he wants it. Miranda looking for a back take. Another big takedown landing right into side control. And this is very dangerous territory, territory for Axel Sola. Needs to dig in for the underhook and try to work back for guard. Turn into his opponent, get on the hip, try and work, maybe even get the half guard back. Miranda very wisely not hanging on to any submission attempt for too long. Looks for one, doesn't work, looks for something else. I think he's trying to work for a Kimura here. Looking for a Kimura right here. Trying to step over the head, isolate the arm. Decides to let it go. Knee on belly, right through to almost. In the quarter guard now, half guard, knee shield in place from bottom. Oh, he's leg lock attempt. We've got the forearm in on the heel. Oh, he's trying to take that home, but he slips out, and now he's going to get punished for it by Axel Sola. Roll to the knee bar. Victory roll, looking for the knee bar now. Doesn't quite have it flush. May look. Looking for an for inside heel. heel hook now. Almost has the heel and the arm. Thought he may have transitioned to an omiplata there. Does not. Toe hold, looking for the. Going back to the heel hook. This is dangerous, dangerous territory, and Axel Sola needs to be very, very careful here. Can't just rip the leg out, or he could do himself some serious damage. Needs to keep everything as compacted as he can so he doesn't let Miranda extend the hips fully and get the submission. And right now, Axel Sola making things a little bit more even with some big shots. Axel Sola, Axel Sola showing brilliant submission defense there. What Mateusz did so much that impressed me, Phil, wasn't how hard he went for any single submission. It was how well he transitioned. It must be said, this is the longest that Miranda has spent in the cage in one singular outing. This may, this actually, I believe, is longer than the time he spent in the cage in the accumulation of his four fights. The accumulated time in the cage was 3.28, and we are now just coming up to surpass it. Just about to surpass it. Nice work from Axel Solo, just coming up underneath the arm. These don't need to be concussive shots, but they need it to be a cumulative damage. Solo now showing positional dominance, Brave Nation. Doing a great job of just taking his time, and Miranda's not really offering much here at all. Solo doing what's called a tight waist. You reach around the opponent, reach around the back, hold on to his belly, and this is what you do. These are on the arm. A lot of these shots are on the arm, though. Miranda needs to do something a little bit more proactive rather than just cover up. So, Solo being very intelligent, throwing the shots into the arm. When those are blocked fully, throws the uppercut. When those become blocked, goes back to hitting. All Axel Sola right now. Nice shot selection from Sola. Good job from Miranda to reclaim guard, but Sola working beautifully inside the guard. Shades of Tito Ortiz back in the day. Someone like Miranda still very dangerous, as we said. The 2021 World Nogi Grappling Champion. Oh, big elbow smashed down the medal from Axel Sola. Definitive statement made at the end of the round, and I don't know if we're going to see Gabriel Miranda making it to a second round here, ladies and gentlemen. He is still on his bike. Phil, that was an incredible first half of the round, my friend. Miranda, and that was an unbelievable second half of the round by Axel Soli. He absolutely beat the fight out of his opponent. I am so glad you said fight instead of something else there, Gary. Thought you were going to get a full counsel, but Miranda. Of the man who started the run so aggressively. And Derek, I said that potentially fatigue could be a factor, given that Miranda had never been beyond their first round in mixed martial arts. And Sola really, really turned it up. We've got multiple things in play here. There's physical fatigue, but there's also mental fatigue. When you think you've got a submission and it ends up being taken away from, from, from you, it's very, very tough mentally, and that happens over and over and over again. It's 
shut him down. I'd like to see Axel put it on him. Axel Sola finds himself on his back again. Again, Miranda, like a dog with a bone when it comes to the lower limb submissions. Axel Sola taking his time, methodically working. And this is the thing, when you commit your hands to a lower limb submission. Oh, hammer fist out there, hammer fist. This is nasty for Sola Axel Sola. Very wisely looking up at the, looking up at the ref saying, hey, yeah, he's gonna stop it. This. Yeah, it worked. Axel Sola almost a steamboat in that finish. Gets it done beautifully. Axel Sola with his first finish by way of KO or TKO. Showing great respect to his fallen adversary. An adversary no more inside the Brave Arena. Axel Sola still undefeated by Ad O. Great Nation, once again you saw the beautiful sportsmanship that characterizes Brave Combat Federation. Axel Sola was on top, landing hammer fist after hammer fist after hammer fist. If you blinked, you missed it. But he looked up at the referee, looking straight in the eye as if to say, and in fact it is saying with body language, hey, I do not want to hit this man anymore. I don't want to hit him anymore. Stop. Stop this fight right now. Fight wasn't stopped. He threw a few more shots and that was that. Beautiful display of sportsmanship and of course, power from Axel Sola, KHK. NFC fans, another explosive end. This comes at 34 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from KHK Team Bahrain and Boxing Squad. That's a Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and five losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing Ahmad Fight Club and fighting out of Grozny, Russia. Please welcome Abdul Rachman. Kaziev! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 17 wins and six losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing boxing squad and fighting out of France by way of Algeria. Please welcome Elias Broly Jones. For referee instructions. This is my instructions all the time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now, let's go. Let's do it. Bandit Decky Larkin. I can categorically tell you, neither one of those men understood a word Decky said. <laughs> we are set for this main event. Elias Jerome in the blue, in the red corner, taking on Abdul Rahman Mahajiev in the blue. 
Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenes calling the action here at Brave 48. And there is a palpable tension right now to see how this fight unfolds. Really will be telling to see the game plan of Giroud. Will he, as you alluded to, Phil, mm -hmm. to take this past that first round? Because we know what the inevitable game plan of Makajiev is, is to try and get the fight done in the first round. If he can't do that, what adaptations can he make to his game? Absolutely, we're going to have to see him dig deep. But what he uses, because he's not scared of the ground, he will throw kicks, he will throw big winging shots. And as he proved in his outing at Brave 32, even if you put him on his back, he can submit you from that position as well. Interestingly, though, wearing a knee brace on his right knee, I believe it is. Left knee. Left knee. Can't tell my left from my right, 32 <laughs> years old. We'll have you using a knife and fork properly by the end of this as well. <laughs> That's big talk. <laughs> oh, oh, huge shot to the body from Makajiev. Big stuff. And what are you seeing early, Kirik? This is very tentative, respectful opening from both these fighters. I'm seeing intelligent fighting. Stepping straight in there and starting to exchange is not intelligent fighting. You don't know what your opponent's like no matter how much, even if you trained with them, no matter how much tape you watch. You need to find out for yourself what your opponent's reaction time is, what his reach is, what his strength feels like, and you have to do that as safely as possible. That's what we're watching right here. It's not just a tit for tat. We're watching information being downloaded on both sides. Sometime in the next minute or so, they're going to have the information they need, and they're going to turn the wick up. Nice body kick once again. And we're looking at South Pole versus Orthodox. Those rear kicks to the body from both sides really open in these positions, Phil. Oh, that was a nice shot landed by Jerun just as Makajiev was coming in. But yes, as you say, it opens up a new myriad of strikes, a new myriad of possibilities for the fighters with an Orthodox going against the South Pole. I would like to see Jerun try and open up with the body kick a little bit more. Try and really dig that into the liver. But in saying that, then you're vulnerable to the takedown. Certainly. Oh, and if you look at the underneath of the left elbow there of Jeroen, he is wearing oh, yeah, that uh, marks from the, the body shots from Makhajiev. Very tense. This is the, the calmest start I've seen from Abdul Rahman. Oh, oh God! God! Knockout! Jeroen looking to finish the fight. Rahman trying to survive. I'll be honest, I thought that was a head kick knockout, gentlemen. Just by the way, Makhajiev hit the ground. Well, we are going to see he's calling him in, but no. Oh, We're going to see if it, it got up very tentatively Makazi there. Of letting his head clear. Oh, ducking down. Looking for the finish here. Oh, looking for the guillotine. This would be the seventh, or sorry, the eighth guillotine of the man's career if he were to get it. Makhajiev has a foot. He's oh, going to try and clear that. the Look knee. That. that is oh. great technique. Got to stop the leg entanglement. Pass to the far side. Now he's in top side control. That might have been the biggest mistake that Jurun has made. Oh, look at the angle on the net. There's... It's just the technique for escaping. And you think about that still dusting those cobwebs off from getting dropped by that head kick, Phil. That was an absolute huge head kick. And you have to give credit to the recuperative powers of Makhajiev because I thought he was gone. I yeah. genuinely thought he was out. The way he fell, and credit to Deki Larkin as well, understanding the fighter was still in it. Phil, he may well have been out and then came to as he hit the ground. It happens rarely, but this has been a night of firsts for me. I've seen some incredible actions, some of which I've never seen before. I do believe the fighter was out, hit the ground, woke up, and now appears to be in control. Oh, oh, in this, top, in it, this is his bread and butter, Phil, sorry. No, not, not at all. I was just saying I'd like to see Jerun try and work his way back to the feet as that's where he had the most success. And this is exactly where Mukherjee wants to be. And he has one minute, two seconds to work. His ground game, good guard work as well, though, from Jeroen. He might drop for this, he doesn't yet. Yeah. Turning around, oh, look at this, looking to try and get this. This would be unreal if we see a toehold finish here from uh, Makhajiev. Brave Nation, Makhajiev needs to secure that grip on his left wrist with his right one. He's pinning. The limb, and he has lost it for now. He's transitioning, to the almost there. This is the get. Wow, can he get this? Trying to triangle the Might feet to keep himself safe. Might switch. Could switch to a straight knee yeah. bar. Decides not to. And now Jerome oh. ends up on top. Oh, if you are a jiu-jitsu purist, that was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> And now on top, Jerome, as we come to the end of the first round. Now the questions begin, Phil. Now, Kirik, we ask... Can Makajiev take his first victory outside the first round? This for 
Jerome will be a little landmark for him going back to his corner. I was at the weigh-ins. He did have a very, very hard weigh-in. Some fighters can bounce back from that quicker than others. We're gonna find out in the next five minutes whether that's the case here. And we see the body kick there from Makaji. We we'll hopefully see that head kick as well. Talk us through this, Phil. That was absolutely beautiful. Rear leg, as we alluded to, coming from that southpaw stance, it comes up at an unconventional angle. Boom! And the way that Makazi have hit the ground, I thought he was gone. Yeah, and this is where instinct kicks in, here. This is where him being a grappler since he was two, three, four years old, that's where it came into play. It does. I think strategically there was a little bit of a, a mistake on Broly's part there. I don't think where he wants to engage him is on the ground. But then the fact he was also able to hang on the ground with Magaziev is also another feather in his cap. So Without he's bound to be brimming with confidence going into the second round. Second round is upon us at the main event here at the Arabian Night. Brave 48. Whew. Makajiev in the blue corner. Giron. Giron, sorry, in the red. They touch gloves. We are underway once again. Such tension in this room. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You can feel, I say room, we're, we're outside. outside. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> such tension on the planet. This is uh, That's where our heads are at right now. We can't even make a distinction between the setting in which we are in. It's almost like Jeroen sizing him up for another big kick, either upstairs or downstairs. Well, that, as we said, the body kick is open from that stance for both of them, but so is the head kick. You see how, if, what Jeroen did there, if that's what he can do, if he can land a couple of strikes, get out again, and again, almost like a Diaz-style accumulation of punches, and that it will in turn fatigue Makajiev. Yeah, fatigue, fatigue has certainly been a telling trait in the Makajiev. Makajiev, of course, known as a grappling specialist, but he's show, showing some sl slick strikes to us as well. Yeah, coming from that Akhmat Fight Club, they've got so many bodies down there that they can train with and learn from, and the facilities are, are phenomenal. Brian, there's only three things you can count on in life, death, taxes, and Akhmat fighters bringing it. <laughs> Jeroen stepping in with that check hook. Oh, there he is, starting to attack that leg with the knee brace on it, which is on his left knee. <laughs> Stepping forward is Jeroen. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go inside, outside, and try and compromise that knee a little bit. Attempted counter strike there over the top, coming from Makhajiev. And he's taking some breaths. Look for him to blitz forward, try and create an opportunity for that clinch, for that takedown. But saying that when you're against a pinpoint striker like Jeroen is uh, easier said than done. Did get a shot off over the top there. In the corner of Makhajiev is uh, Daoud Shahayev. Shahayev, one of, uh, one of his training partners, hit him and his four brothers, three other brothers I should say, including a pair of twins, are fantastic fighters. Tentative stuff here. Happy to pick his shot, Jeroen, Phil. Yeah, as I say, it seems to be that accumulation that he's looking for right now to, to really drag that fight into the deeper waters. He's had a little bit of taste of the ground game. He's thought, that's not particularly where I want to spend all my time. Yes, I acquitted myself well, but what if I can drag this fight potentially into even a third round? Absolutely. And for me, Kirik, oh, there's a much different level of understanding of range in this. You look at the winging shots coming from Makajiev that are miles away from connecting, whereas look at that stepping in and causing damage is Jeroen. Makajiev, as much as, as much as anything else, is trying to control the distance to try and lure his opponent in where he can entangle his arms, maybe pull guard, try and win the fight from there, or get his opponent to overextend, get into those hips, take him down with a leg trip. Winging hooks once again from Makajiev. It's just cleaner work from Jeroen right now. Jeroen oh. slightly buckled the leg there, and Jeroen's doing a good job of, of keeping his back from the cage. He's always occupying that center, landing his strikes, bit of lateral movement, so that he's not leaving himself vulnerable to the takedown from Makhachev. And that lead leg is the primary target in this second round of this three-round fight. Which also takes the pop out of the takedown, because you can't drop down on it for the double.
Oh, now he's back against the cage wheel. Makaji have used this as an opportunity, but no. Once again in the center. Oh, he got clipped. There's weapons. Oh, in nice mixed head movement. Sorry. No, my mistake. I tripped over you there. Sorry. There's weapons in mixed martial arts, Kirik, that can help you set up takedowns like jabs, like uh, co certain combinations that get you closer to your opponent. And we're just not seeing that from Makajiev at the minute. The simplest way to take down an opponent in mixed martial arts is to throw a one two at him in order to coax him into throwing a one two at you. It's impossible to place your hips to stop a double leg and at the same time strike effectively. Ooh. I don't believe, however, the double leg is Makajiev's favored way of getting down to the ground. He likes to entangle the arms with his own, go for a leg trip. Oh, that left straight is starting to find a little bit of a home on the chin of Makaziev. When you look at the difference in, in shot choice, Makaziev is throwing winging hooks, whereas there is a much more direct approach coming from Giroud and a much more successful one in that second round. Oof, very, very deep waters now from Makaziev. Here we have Daoud Shahayev in there with his training partner, his friend. Trying to muster him up, but let's talk about some of the action, Phil. And there you see just some of the work. The kicks are coming from behind the punches. Everything's sequential. Nothing's thrown just for the sake of winging punches. Targeted the leg for a little bit, which I think was very intelligent. And it'll be interesting to see just how quickly Makajiev gets up because there has been a little bit of controversy around him not getting up quickly off the cage and fights have been stopped in that fashion. And when you look at just the physics of the choices of weapon Kirik those winging shots of Makajiev not being set up they, they take a lot longer to get than those straight shots of Giroud and Giroud is landing on the money his accuracy is there as well they do there's physics and defense as well the backward movement that Makajiev is showing is taking the sting off of those shots that are coming in a shot that's half as strong if it catches the opponent moving in at the right time can take you out whereas if the opponent's moving away it's not so Makajiev is using some physics and those big uh, winging shots I believe are more to keep his opponent from doing anything keep his opponent away at, after he's thrown his combination so we are at our final five minutes of this main event here on Brave 48. Makhajiev in the blue corner taking on Giroud oh, in the that's red. A Ooh. Big knee. Solid knee. Gentlemen, Broly has been told by his corner to turn it up, and he's clearly listened to him. And it is just a, a much more measured clinical approach, approach from Giroud. It's a kickboxing approach pretty much at the minute. It's such a uh, yeah, that's his wheelhouse. This yeah. is where he does a lot of his best work. Must be said, he does also have six wins via decision, so he is acclimated to going the, the distance in a fight. And you can hear that. You can hear Dao Shakhaev saying, you have one round to win this. One round. And now just three minutes, 50 seconds of that round for Makhajiev. Makhajiev, for me, is lacking just a little bit of urgency, and that could be borne out of fatigue. I was going to say that, that that is what is needed now, some sort of urgency to, to make something happen. It's it's great he's not taking too much damage off the back of that, that getting dropped in the first round. It's great he's still in this fight, but to make it happen, to, make, to take the victory, he needs mm -hmm. to do something and do something quick. On the balance of power, it, it does feel like Jurund is winning this fight so far. We talk about control, Kiri, we got, sorry, we talk about damage, but at the minute, just in control is Jeroen. He's having it all his own way. Seems to be very much one-way traffic. It is. He has not been able to inflict much damage with it, though, but there's no question in my mind, for what it's worth, that he is ahead two rounds to zero at this point. Final three minutes. Always on the back foot. Makajiev has got to do something. Got to find the fire from somewhere. He's looking to counter, which I, I don't think is the right game plan here. Not if you are looking to uh, to switch the tide of momentum, Phil. Go oh, just close there with the head kick. And I think Jarund is so good at getting out of the space after he lands the shots. So that was a great one, too. That it's going to be very, very difficult for Makajiev to get the takedown. Oh, another oh. shot right down the pipe. What I would like to see Makajiev do is punch his way into a takedown. 
Use those big shots to try and get some sort of connection. And then he's got an uphill struggle still, Kirik, because the, the clock's against him. To get a submission within two minutes against a high-level fighter like Giroud, and that's very difficult. This is not a fighter who can be taken down and tapped out quickly, and it's not a fighter who's out of condition. It's much easier to get a knockout from standing or a submission from the ground when a fighter is exhausted. You are not looking at an exhausted fighter in Elias June. Fighting at his own pace, very happy at his own range as well, Phil. And this is going to be a huge feather in the cap if he's to get this win against somebody who is as infamously dangerous on the ground as Makajiev, especially having spent a little bit of time with him. There's oh, a little bit of urgency. The this is deep. Oh, I don't this know. This is deep. Oh, Makajiev has got to fight those hands. Can he? He's tapping. He's, he's tapping. tapping. Oh, he's it's out. over. Giroud claims the victory again by guillotine. A stunning debut for the Frenchman. That is his eighth win and how fitting is it that the Frenchman has his eighth win via guillotine. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Incredible performance. A submission specialist was submitted in front of our eyes. That is absolutely huge. Becoming only the third man to submit Abdul Rahman Makhachiev. So, so in control through those rounds and then once that opportunity opened up dived on the neck phil talk us through this this was he sprawled wonderfully he's got an incredible grip on him as we know locks up the guillotine guard and from there it was good night what a squeeze this young man must have and that's the arm in guillotine as well and it doesn't even look like he has the position deep enough from where we can see it here there we have it, and you'll just see the right hand starting to tap here underneath. You get the same thing at Phil with strikes. Uh, a fighter like Mike Tyson can hit you in the middle of the forehead. There's yeah. no button there, but it puts you out. Same thing can happen with submissions. If you have extraordinary power, like Elias June has, even an imperfectly placed guillotine can cause what you see right here, which is, as I said, a submission specialist submitting. And we saw a fantastic finish there, Phil, but the composure, the control, just the execution of a perfect game plan, that's what we saw as well with this exactly. debut. Exactly, the, the first round, initiate as much damage as you can, survive on the ground for a little bit. Second round, purely striking, turn it into a kickboxing match. Third round, use your striking to force the takedown. Use the takedown to get your most value submission. Take the win, beautiful. It was game plan by numbers. So we are set to announce our main event. Let's hand it for one more time to that man, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible way to finish our historic Brave 48 Arabian Night. This main event comes to a dramatic close at three minutes and 34 seconds of the third round. Your winner by guillotine, Elias Broly Jones.